Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jerry. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on adaptive layout. Although you can set constraints, views, and image differences for size classes through features in Xcode, there may be times when you want the code to behave differently based on the size class. Or you may want to force a view to behave as though it were in a different size class. In this part of the series, we'll look at trait collections and trait environments. These are the class and protocol that you'll use to detect the current size class from code and do some interesting things, like overriding the size class. This is how a view on an iPhone in Landscape could have a regular vertical size class, for example. Let's get started. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video and the challenge. You'll have this panorama photo viewer showing a scrollable image in portrait, and then the entire image showing in landscape. You'll also have a toggle button that simply overrides the vertical size class trait to get that switching behavior between the two. As the name suggests, UI Trait Collection is a collection of traits that describes the current state of the adaptive layout environment. In addition to horizontal and vertical size class, this also describes the user interface idiom that tells if you're running on an iPhone, iPad, and now Apple TV, the display scale, which can be used to detect a retina display, and the force touch capability. You can create UI trait collection objects directly, like you did in the challenge for the previous tutorial to specify UI image asset variants. But they're also available as part of the UI trait environment protocol. This protocol is implemented by UI screen, UI window, UI View Controller, UI Presentation Controller, and UI View. UI Trait Collection can, and usually does, have unspecified values for some of the properties. For example, idiom and display scale are usually only defined at the highest level, on the UI screen object. So when you're querying the trait collection of a view, the system will go up the hierarchy to fill in the unspecified values if it can. So when you override a value in a trait collection, that override impacts views and controllers down the hierarchy. The unspecified concept is the same as the any value you saw earlier, but can apply to any of the values in the trait collection. For example, if you create a trait collection object with only the horizontal size class specified, the display scale and other values would be unspecified and would match any value. The UI trait environment protocol also has a trait collection did change method that is called after the trait environment changes for that object. You might use this if you wanted to have a different view margin for different size classes or to invalidate the intrinsic size of your view when the environment changes. But if you wanted to animate your changes and coordinate with the existing transition, there's another method on UI view controller and UI presentation controller will transition to trait collection that passes in a UI view controller transition coordinator, allowing you to specify animations that should coordinate with the existing one. This is the app that we'll be using for the next few demos. And it's just a panoramic photo viewer. So we have a few panoramic photos uh, included in the app. And you can see it just, uh, you can scroll around vertically and horizontally to view the, the full panoramic photo. What we want to, uh, happen the behavior that we want is we want this photo to size to fit in the vertical direction um, whenever it's in a regular height size class but when we rotate we want the full panoramic photo to show with no scrolling and no zooming in the view so let's take a look at how to do this before we look at the code let me just show you something here on the storyboard so we have this container view controller. And when you drill down from one of the panoramic photos in the table view, it shows this container view controller. And the container view controller contains the image view controller. And the reason why we have this container set up is so that we can reuse this image view controller later on. So you'll see that a little bit later. Let's take a look at image view controller. And the first thing that we want is a method here to set the zoom scale the way that we need it. We'll start with the um, portrait mode. And first we wanna make sure that we have an image because the image view image can be nil. So we use the guard statement for that. And if we don't have an image, then this method really can't do anything. So we just return. 
There's two things that we need to set. We need to set the zoom scale and the content offset. And this is complaining about content offset being a var because we're not changing it. But later on in the demo, we're going to change this. So I'm just going to leave it as a var for now, even though there's a warning on that. So once we calculate the zoom scale and the content offset, we just set it, set the um, minimum and the maximum and the current zoom scale on the scroll view to that scale. And we set the content offset. So we have this reset zoom scale method. Now we need to call it. We're using auto layout in the storyboard. And so we need to call this after the layout has been calculated. So the right place to do that is in view did layout subviews. We just need to call the method, that's all. Let's build and run and see what that looks like. Okay, so now we cannot scroll in the vertical direction, which is what we wanted. It still scrolls in the horizontal direction, which is great. And if we rotate, it does the same thing, the same behavior in the vertically compact size class. So here we've come to the point where we want to do something different in our code, depending on what the size class is. And that's what trait collection is for. Just hide this warning. So the way to check the size class is by the trait collection and the view controller has a trait collection property. So we can just look at that directly. might be a little bit confusing that in Interface Builder, it's called height, but in code it's called vertical. But they're really the same thing. The vertical size class is, is the, the height size class, and the width is the horizontal size class. So for a compact vertical size class, what we want to do is set the zoom scale based on the width of the image. We know that the width is going to be the constraining dimension in this case. And so, so we get the size by dividing the available space by the, the image size width, and that gives us the zoom scale. And we want the image to be centered vertically in the space that we have. So we know that there's going to be a gap on the top and the bottom. And this vertical space is just calculating that gap. It's basically taking the height available in the view and subtracting out the height of the image multiplied by the zoom scale and dividing that by two to get the gap on the top and the bottom. And then we're setting the content offset of the scroll view to that gap a negative amount and that'll shift everything down. We don't want the user to be able to scroll in this mode, so we set scroll enabled to false. But remember whenever we set state like this and we have um, two paths, we need to make sure and handle it in both paths. So and the other path, we'll set it back to true. Let's build and run and see how this works. Okay, so the regular vertical size class still appears to be working the same, which is great. That's just what we want. When we rotate, now we've got the behavior we just implemented, which is showing the full image whenever we're in a compact vertical size class. And that's a great example of using the trait collection to get the current size class and do something different in code based on what that size class is. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. The image view controller in the app is checking its current size class to change its behavior on rotation. So your challenge is to trigger that change with a trait override. In the parent view controller, you'll handle the toggle button press and create a new UI trait collection object and then override the child view controller. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.